and that we did. Um, by the time we reached the fifth month of our sessions, we read Justine Garbalasier's A Liar, a book of such mind-bending, mind-blowing proportion. We didn't even know how to receive it at first. Declared a compulsive liar um, and the, the epitome of an unreliable narrator from the start. We jump. Um, Micah leads readers to wade through um, her messy narrative to get to the bottom of things, um, it, to get to the truth. Did she or did she not kill her boyfriend? Um, Micah, the main character, the protagonist of this novel, um, as she spins this electric tale, we're forced to wonder what is the truth? We are left literally to piece together what's going on in this narrative. As Micah, the protagonist of this story, uh, spins her electric tale, we were forced to wonder what's going on in me? What is going on under all of this mess that is unfurling in front of us? At first glance, Micah's story was one of utter confusion, distraction, and abstraction, uh, split into three sections, uh, telling the truth, telling the true truth, <laughs> and the actual real truth, uh, and subsections that flash between the past and present, uh, we were completely at the mercy of our unreliable narrator, um, and that's the way she liked it. Liar is the story of a biracial girl uh, who doesn't fit in anywhere but in the narrative that she creates for herself um, and the reader. Entirely dependent upon her every word, we as readers had no choice but to accept and to suspect um, the narrative that we were given. Her ultimate control is alienating yet fascinating to us. Yeah, yeah. she wraps everything in this idea of how she can control her inner image, how she can control how people see her, how people speak to her. You know, I was just I was saying that I think the most interesting, uh, the most interesting thing about the book uh, for me, and when thinking about the frame of reference of of this, of this thing, of this whole book club is, you know, her, her being able to control herself, you know, as a black woman, you know, as what many scholars have called, you know, the repository for social I think the class, like, at Williams, like, so I think maybe my, uh, maybe my junior year, and it was a class on trauma recovery. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're clear. Okay, yeah, okay, so um, a lot of, one of the things that we talked about was a lot of scholars discussing the black person, the black female body as a repository for social death. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about what that means afterwards, but mm -hmm. I think that in applying those ideas to to um, Makai, whatever her name is, I really don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I think at my vote, girl, I really think that it's interesting how her how her lies sort of become the way that she controls that. You know, she controls what her, what she is a representative of. She controls what she embodies as um, as a black woman. She she controls. What well, whose standards she's applied to, if she applies to anybody's standards. You know, she comes off the scale whenever she wants to and she joins back whenever she needs. She leaves society, she joins it with the things that she does and the way that she tells her stories and the lies that she's saying. For me, that's the most interesting thing in the book. Again, Micah is a character um, who's hard to put a finger on. Biracial, gender neutral presenting, um, and stationed primarily on the fringes of both her home and her school life, uh, to be honest. Micah seems to not fit in anywhere. Um, as a result of this, she carves space for herself um, through the narrative that she gives the reader. Um, she alters her current reality <laughs> with her lies um, and bends a social convention um, in order, in the name of creating space for herself. Um, in this tragic, fantastical whirlwind of a story, Micah breaks down um, of multiple binaries um, and explores spectrums of existence in regards to her gender, her humanity, her race, um, and her bodily aut autonomy. As Rio says, uh, Micah is completely able to sidestep the, um, the rules of mainstream black girlhood with her lives. Uh, she ultimately decides who she is and how she's perceived because she's writing for us, she's creating the story for us. So we have no choice but to view her how she wants to be presented, um, which is phenomenal. This kind of story is not only radical, 
um, but became an example of <laughs> the representation that we really wanted, the representation that we were yearning for, a narrative that puts us in the driver's seat. Uh, and though this book does get to crazy levels of abstraction and magical realism and things of that nature, still being able to identify with a black girl who's able to create her own world, who's able to control perceptions of her black girlness is something that we don't get to do every day. As we're reading ourselves in the text, Micah is reading herself to us. She's giving us the lens through which to view her. So again, the story was really the, represent the kind of representation that we've been yearning for. Um, Micah's blackness is not only an elemental part of who she is, um, but it also informs her existence and enables her to envision an otherwise for herself. And when I say otherwise, I mean that it, there's, it's a realm of unbridled possibility. Um, literally, any, just even envisioning otherwise, what would something else other than this, other than this world look like? And so with Micah, with her story, she literally takes that to the most neutral place where literally anything can happen, um, anything, you know? And so Micah, in that way, she gets to become a fully formed character that breathes and moves in a way um, that makes her real. We hear her voice, we see her. Um, Liar is not a novel that has black representation um, or just a black character um, as the focus just to say that, you know, a black presence was here. We have, we have <laughs> the check, the requirement of having a black girl book. It's a novel that explores what happens when black girls write the rules. <laughs> what happens if there are no rules, you know? So Lyra write, writes directly against that vapid a kind of representation, that representation for representation's sake that's just solely focused on presence but not focused on what the presence actually means. What is the context of this presence? What is it actually doing in this space? So for us, Micah ultimately represented an evolution in the black literary imaginary that is the imaginative space that exists just for literature um, when I use these terms. So she was able to inhabit like a black female space um, in the immense imaginary without losing any of her blackness. Then her blackness was just the source of this infinite expression of self, of gender, of sexuality, and of, of being, of just simply being in the space. Um, she can exist as a possible abstract mirror of experience for black girls instead of a mirror of black girl pain. Um, you know, so often, you know, even if our stories are positive, the, they focus on what happens on the outside. They focus on giving us that mirror of experience, but so often that mirror of experience is of pain, is of what we have to go through as black women. And those texts are very important. They definitely help guide us, especially as YA is such a formative um, time, it's such a formative um, tool, you know, to, through which to read yourself and read the world, but at the same time, we need to be able to read ourselves in and otherwise and take the bridles off. We need to be able to take that limitation off of ourselves and to see ourselves how we truly want to be seen.